All right, guys, let's learn three math functions that I have found very useful in my time as a game developer. Here we go. Okay, guys, so the first one I'll teach you, and probably the most important you'll find, is the dot product. And the dot product is basically what you'd call an operator over vectors. And if you're not familiar with what a vector is, it is a direction and a magnitude. So what I mean by that, if we're looking at the screen, it's a 2D space, you have a 2D vector in it, it's basically a direction, in this case, pointing up and to the right, and a magnitude. Let's say that we're working with the metric system. Let's say this length is five meters. So you have the direction component and the fact that it's five meters long being the magnitude. So that's what we're going to be working with. So with dot product, basically you have vector one, you'd have vector two. If we took the dot product between these two vectors, and let's say that they're 90 degrees uh, perpendicular from each other, you would actually get zero. And in another example, if you had two vectors that were pointing in the same direction, both v1 and v2 essentially were the same vector, you would get one. If they are pointed in the opposite direction, that'll get you negative one. So what the dot product gets you essentially is how aligned two vectors are, like how parallel they are, how perpendicular they are, it should be noted that these vectors do have to be normalized. And what that means is that their length, like if I were to take the length of this one here, and let's say we're working in meters, let's say that this is five meters, and then you take the length of this one, and this is just one meter. So you can take the dot product of things like this, but it's not going to give you an accurate metric of how aligned they are. I believe that this will still get you zero if they're perpendicular, even if this is not normalized. But as soon as they start getting closer to each other, you have a vector like this, you have a vector like this, like this is not gonna, two vectors that are the same, but of different magnitude, taking the dot product is not gonna get you one. So just make sure that when you're calling this in unity using vector three dot dot, and then your vectors, just make sure that these are first normalized. And the way you can do that is just by doing v1 dot normalized and that'll return you the normalized version of it so if you if it originally was five meters long um, the return value will be the same direction but one meter long instead so the dot product is especially useful when you're doing vr stuff for instance if i have the player's head and they're looking in a direction and i want to make sure that an event happens when they look in a certain direction i can actually take let's say i want them to look this way before something happens i can actually take the dot product of where they're looking and where I want them to look. And when this is within some threshold, let's say like 0.8, you know, we're encroaching on one, which would mean he's looking in that exact, exact direction. Um, I can say like, okay, trigger the event. He's looking close enough to where I want him to look. Okay, the second thing I wanna talk about is projections. So essentially what a projection is, is if you take a vector and you cast a shadow. So what I mean by that is if we have this vector here, the projection of this vector, it would be this vector here. It would basically be like if we had a light up here and it was beaming down and then we got its shadow. So basically this ends up being really useful in areas where you want to say like, if I'm placing a UI in VR and I have this person's head and they're looking up and I just wanna place it basically in front of them. What you end up doing is you take the projection of this vector, which will give you, of course, the shadow here. And now you have this vector. And then you just you say like, okay, the UI's position is his head plus the projection of this vector onto this plane here. So the way that you do this in Unity is by using vector3.project. And that will take in your vector and then a vector normal. So the vector you give it is the one that you want to find the shadow of. And the vector normal is basically the line pointing out of the plane that you are trying to take the projection on. So if you give it vector three dot up, it'll project it onto the horizontal plane. If you give it vector three dot right, it will project it onto the Z plane. And this concept can be a little confusing. So let's just look at a few examples. You have this vector, you project it onto this plane here. It's going to give you this vector here. What if we had a much longer vector? Let's assume that these are in the same space. This one's way longer. It would project here. So it gets you basically the same vector, except this one is longer, probably twice as long, something like that. Or at least that's what it looks like from here. Then if we did a projection in 3D space, we have a 2D plane that we're projecting on. Let's say that we have this vector. It's going to 
project like this. And again, it's just the shadow. So if we had a plane that was sitting that way and we had a vector here that we wanted to project onto this plane, it would do it like this. So overall, this is just a really nice way to flatten a vector and you'll find yourself using it a lot once you understand it. Okay, and the last thing we'll talk about is how to get from one point to another. So essentially, if I have a XYZ 3D space and I have a vector one and a vector two, how do I get the vector that represents this vector here? The way you do that is by vector two minus vector one. And that's gonna get you vector three, which is essentially this vector here. It should be noted that I drew it down here because it again starts at the origin. But if I wanted to get vector two, if I just had vector one and vector three, I would do vector one plus vector three. And that would give me vector two, which makes sense because you just rearrange these values to get this one. So that's really nice. So a reason I might use this is let's say that I have an object. We don't know what it is, but we have some object and we want to ray cast in some direction. So we have this, which is essentially vector one. We have this, which is essentially vector three, but we don't know what direction to actually do this ray cast. The direction that we would do is vector three minus vector one. And that would get us this. So starting at this position, we would ray cast in that direction and that would actually give us a ray cast towards vector three. So let's say we're playing a game where you, it's a shooter, you have your gun and you're shooting, you know, you're shooting all your bullets, whatever. And let's say that there's a power up that basically makes it so that you don't have to aim. You just hold down the trigger and it basically hits whatever is out here, whatever that is that you would want to hit the enemy player. Basically, instead of shooting a ray directly where their gun is facing, which you could instead do, let's say this is just the enemy vector and this is the gun vector, you could take the enemy minus gun, and that'll give you where you want to ray cast to the enemy. It'll give you a direct line to the enemy, essentially. So this is really, really useful. You'll find yourself using this a lot. Well, if you have any lingering questions about this, feel free to ask me in the Discord linked below. I'm always ready and available to answer questions. Hopefully this was helpful. Have a good day. <laughs>